Welcome everyone to the very, very first episode of the Flickers podcast. Yep. Very special. You feel special? It's a big day. I'm feeling it's it. It's a special day. I'm feeling it. It's pretty exciting. I've never done anything like this before. Anyway, let's get on with it. Uh, on this podcast, we will be talking about movies, early and new, new or old, TV shows, and just general pop culture. Yeah. And before we start, actually, we want to just tell you guys what this podcast will be about. So, and what we hope to achieve in the podcast, mm. yeah. um, which would be like, we don't want this to just be for the cinephiles and just the cinephiles. We kind of want it to be just like a general chit chat, um, yeah. just shooting around, just yeah, shooting around. Yeah. So people who are really into movies can tune in, listen, and I guess gain knowledge or just like see someone else's point of view about it. And also just for the general movie goer to just tune in and like what we're talking about and just kind of see a review on a movie they might want to see. Let me just chip in. I think also it's important to remember that these are just our opinions. They're yeah. not They're not fact. They're, I mean, it's my fact. <laughs> it's probably Jesse's fact as well. But um, yeah, they're just opinions. So don't take them too seriously. Um, obviously, yeah, we did just our opinions. So we're just going to have fun with it. And just, yeah, yeah. Be cool. And we love movies. So. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's pretty much all we do. <laughs> I, I um, ju- actually, you know what? Just before we get into anything, yeah. more, we probably should just introduce ourselves. Okay. So yeah. My name is John. Yep. And on my on my left, we got little Yessie Martin Justice Grant. His brother, his doobie brother. Yeah. Do- doobies. <laughs> smoking <laughs> doobies with his brothers. brothers. Yeah. Um, we, yeah. So my name is Jesse and I'm studying acting at a theatre school. And so obviously I want to do acting in the future, but I love movies. So I just wanted to make a podcast, talk about movies and also see movies in a different light, which I'm by analysing it more, I guess. And yeah. You're, you've got an upcoming part as a tree. I yes. Heard. Yeah. I'm fine just playing a tree or something. Yeah. You're playing a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Just not, you're just chill. You're not like a hardcore actor. Actually, no, no, you, you do I, go a bit method. I, I go method with yeah, the tree. With the tree. Yeah. So I kind of just go still and legs. just. Yeah. Dogs pee in your legs and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was my yeah, method. Yeah. That's not there. really uh, your radio sensibility, Jesse. Okay. You know, I also do a mean hot dog. This is also I audio. do a good, a good hot dog. So for those of you who are watching the podcast, um, Yep, okay. there it is. Yeah, again, um, radio sensibility. <laughs> but um, uh, my name is John, which I just said, and uh, I am. I've studied film at Afters for a little bit. Uh, yeah, did that for about a year. I love movies. I think it's a bit of an understatement, yeah. but I really, really do. It's kind of all I do. Yeah. I wake up, get out of bed, watch, watch a movie, and that's why we started this podcast too. Because pretty much we're putting a mic in the middle of our daily conversations that we have every day. So we're always talking about movies. All we're doing is put a camera and a mic and we're just going to talk about what we talk about. So let's get started. We're going to talk about some news. Yeah, so we've got this out. new segment. Well, everything's new. Yeah. Well, we've got a segment called Flick or Stick. And in this segment, it's we have movie news and we will either like it. If we like it, we stick with it. If we don't like it, we flick it. Yeah. So when you like, stick. you stick. When you... Don't, Don't like, like you flick. flick. Yeah. All right. So we're actually going to start off with so One Punch Man. Okay, we'll start off with One Punch Man. One Punch Man. It's the movie of One Punch Man. I'm a huge... Well, no, it's not a movie. It's, it's being adapted into yes, a movie. Yes, into yeah. a movie. Yes, but I'm a huge fan of One Punch Man. It's the only anime I actually like, and I've watched all the seasons on Netflix. And they're making a movie... Well, they're, they're writing They're writing it. the movie now, but the writers are uh, Scott Rosenberg, Jeff Pinkner, who wrote Venom. And Jumanji. Okay, what's your initial reaction? Did you flick or stick with that? I am flicking. You're going to flick? I'm a mass- well, I want to stick, but I have to flick because I'm such a fan of One Punch Man and not a fan of Venom. What, what is it about <laughs> exactly? Because I don't really read it. I know like I a very know. general thing. Well, he's basically, it's kind of like he can kill anybody with one punch. Yep. He's so strong. Mm. And a lot of it kind of battles other parts of it like it's not like so much the fight it's that everything's boring for him because no matter who the opponent is he can punch him yeah and they're gone okay just one punch and so it's kind of depressing because he doesn't have to really work for anything in the fight so he kind of lets them hit them hit Mm. him and then he hits him so it kind of battles like depression and and things going on mentally which i like it's just more than just you know so why are you fighting it because of the writers the writers they wrote jumanji and venom yeah but jumanji's not they're not bad movies Terrible movies, John. And Venom, okay, I think Venom is 
it's not great. It's not a great movie, but I'm a Tom Hardy fan too. But Venom, I just I yeah. But I mean, Venom's good in some parts, but I I do think the dialogue and the story is just not really great. But Jumanji, they're, they're okay. Writing they're right shit, movies. and it's just I, it it can be so much better. Like One Punch Man could be such a good movie. Well, you never but they gain these rights, and I just don't. I don't know. Like, are they going to get a white person to play the main role too? Yeah, that can be a thing. Are they going to whitewash it? Which that does happen. Yeah. But who would you want if they did? Like, okay, let's say they no. did watch it whitewash, which they probably if might. they did whitewash it. But who would you want? To Bruce be Willis about? is the only Bruce person. Bruce Willis, <laughs> guy's like eighty years yeah, old. Yeah, but he man. looks like One Punch Man. He's got that bald head and circular head shape. But um, okay. Anyways, <laughs> enough of that. Moving okay. on to news. Uh, Dune. The stills for June have come out. Yeah, so the new Dune movie that's coming out. Uh, December. Still, it's still coming out this year. It's meant to, yeah, in December. Yeah, I, think it, I think it's still, I think they might have wrapped production, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, they, they've released set photos from it. Mm. You can see Timothy Chalamet. Playing the main that. character. Yeah, you're reading Paul. the book. What's I'm reading name? the book, Paul. I am 60, 70 pages in. Yeah, okay. Um, that. But <laughs> yeah, he's, he, the main character is Paul. Yeah. And so. Um, but what do you think about the photos? They look sick. I think it looks pretty cool. Like I thought at first Fucking when he's awesome. standing, it was all paper around him. Yeah. And I was like, why is that paper? But I think I think it's actually like, I think there's spaceships. I don't think it's paper. Yeah. It's it's all gonna look very different. And they, they filmed it in um Jordan, which is cool set, like the desert and everything. I don't know, it's gonna look cool, but Yeah, because there's all these like worms. There's like I don't know yeah, if they're worms, yeah. but like giant there's, worms. Yeah, that's like. crazy shit. And um what do you think about the other characters? Because you, you saw a little bit of, I think you see a bit of Jason Momoa. Jason he's got, Momoa. He hasn't got a beard, no, which I like. No, yeah, that's awesome. You it's also see um, photos of Zendaya and also, uh, what's his name? Who was in Star Wars? Oscar Isaac. Oscar Isaac. And, and Josh and Brolin's in it too. Yeah, and Oscar that's Isaac's a, a got really, a cool Oscar Isaac's beard. That's a really awesome. good cast. Like, that's Fucking crazy amazing. good. You also got, like, Rebe- Rebecca Ferguson, yeah. who's also in the Mission Impossible movies. Which, and yeah. she's also in the um, Doctor Sleep. Yeah. Which is like she's really Sick good movie in that. as well, That's yeah. It. And, and so, um, no, I'm super excited for June. So, so you're gonna flick, stick, flick stick. stick. Or you're gonna stick, stick. Yeah, it's good. I definitely stick with that. Okay, I'm excited because the director Denny Villeneuve, who also did Blade Runner 2049, which I think you watched recently, which I put you, I put you onto that, didn't I? Yes. And how fucking sick is that movie? Yeah, that movie's better so than good. the original, I said. That's a contentious. That's it's a very better than the original. He's making a contentious call early on, <laughs> controversial off the bat. Just gonna go with it. Uh, I, I, you know what though? I'm gonna have to agree. I think. Yeah, it's see? Been, I think it's, um, we might lose credibility off this with the first, <laughs> the first episode. <laughs> the first episode. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, not <laughs> tuning back in. Yeah. They're done. Yeah, they're Because <laughs> <right. laughs> Tony Ward and I. But I, I just think, I just think in terms of like a story, that movie is just, it's just more. I just think it's more engaging, and mm. I think I just like the. Even though you can't have Blade Runner twenty four nine without the original, Obviously. you don't need to see the original to see this one because. Probably not. Spoiler alert, even the movie was out like two or three years ago. Um, mm. Harrison Ford's in it like the last hour. Not even. And the movie like 40 goes, minutes yeah, he's in like the last 40 minutes. And it's, I guess he's a part, he's a, he's a big part of the story, but you don't need him. No. Like, you, well, you need him in the story, but like you, you didn't need him. You need to watch the other one to see this one. No. It's such a good movie. But yeah, I definitely stick with these Dune photos. Yeah. I'm so psyched for that sick. movie. So like I've never read Flicking One Punch Man, sticking on Dune. What are you doing One Punch Man? You're flicking it? Uh, I'm gonna stick. Sticking I'm One Punch Man, sticking Dune. Okay, because, I, because maybe I'm too much of a fan. I, I'm just angry. I've never read it, and yeah. so maybe I should read it. Yeah, I've read, watched. Maybe I'm too much of a fan. You know, sometimes though, you, you're probably right in flicking it because they did that with The Last Airbender, and it was terrible. And that movie's dead set. I mean, I'm I like M Night Shyamalan, but yeah, woo wee, that <laughs> stunk. That is dead set. <laughs> Didn't even call him Ang. That movie's a Ang. skid mark. Ang. Skid mark on the Anna Pants of society. <laughs> but he recovered. Like, that's pretty cool. Like, yeah. to say that you can recover from that. But anyway, we're kind of going away from All that right. point. Um, anyways, also, movies getting moved back because of this COVID-19. Yeah. What movie are you excited for to see that? Well, come on. No Time to Die. I was excited. And the, the, the theme song got released, and I love fucking that theme song. And so I was like, okay, this movie's going to be sick. And then now it's pushed back. Till next year, right? No, it was, it's it's, it's going to be later this year, like yeah. December, hopefully. Yeah, I, mean, um, I definitely, I understand. Obviously, right now we're going through coronavirus and can't. Or was coronavirus? That's what, what? Tab- that's what Tabitha, my girlfriend, uh, she definitely. Oh my god! First shout out of the episode yeah. too. We just were going well. Um, no, but obviously can't go to the cinemas, which sucks. 
And I like the fact that and that's all we do. We've also got yeah, great to start a film podcast when you can't actually go to the movies, isn't it? <laughs> but I do like the fact that they're moving some releases to to streaming services like mm-hmm. Onward, which we're going to review in, in episode uh, two. episode two. But yeah, Onward uh, that's been moved to Disney Plus, and yeah. I, d- I do like that because obviously you can't you can't make money right now in uh, sending movies to cinema because no one's going. But I definitely, I would love to see A Quiet Place. Yeah. Quiet Place 2. Because A Quiet Place John 1. Krasinski. Oh my God. Shout Quiet Place 1. We're that is fans such well. a good movie. Like I was expecting that to be so shit because mm. I, I didn't just, think he could direct. <sighs> yeah. Jim from mm. The Office. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not slanting his, 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 his ability. But I just, you know, he just pulls fucking faces. Like that's his whole <laughs> shtick. And he's, he, he does other things, but like, he's, he's just so. like. Yeah. And then he's like making fun of Dwight. Like that's, but you don't see, like he's from comedy and I'm sure he's done other, I haven't, I mean, I'm not the massive John Krasinski fan, mm. but like him yeah, you mean you don't, you don't necessarily relate him to scary movies, horror mm. films. So as I would, yeah, I definitely think Quiet Place 2 is the one I'm most excited for. Yeah. Definitely. Nice. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, for me, it was no time to die. But yeah. also getting moved back is uh, Mulan and Black Widow. To be honest, I wasn't too um, excited. excited for Black Widow. Mulan? Mulan, kind of, but not really. Um, what about you? I Those two. Out of the two, if I were to pick, just because, I mean, I'm s- you, everyone's so invested in those Marvel movies. Yeah. Like Black Widow, I, I don't know if I needed that movie no. right now. Um, especially because like she died in Endgame. <laughs> I mean, that's it. It's the highest grossing film of the year. If you haven't yeah. seen it yet, you're living under a rock yeah. or something. But that's it's, not a spoiler. That's yeah, but she's died, and so so you know, now you're coming up with the movie after she's dead. It's kind of that, well, it's not going to affect anything. To see, right? I mean, the only reason I really want to see it though is that post credit scene because I just want to see what happens. That's like the only reason why. That's I mean, the only reason why I really saw Captain Marvel, American. Oh, yeah. uh, what's his name? Ant Man and the Wasp. Mm. I'm not like Captain Marvel. They're good movies, no yeah. doubt. Like they're really good movies. But I only wanted to see mm. the progression from Infinity War to Endgame. Yeah. That was all I was excited yeah. about. So any any taste and, and Marvel Studios and Disney, they know that. They know people are just going to be hooked. Yeah. So they say so that. Yeah. And um, so I guess that wraps up the news bit of yeah. Stuff flick or stick? Back. What do you reckon? Do you flick or stick the segment? Sick, that was a good segment. You we're like talking, it? Yeah, we're talking yeah. about good... Um, What's the first episode? No, yeah, and good new stuff. So also comment if you like what we're talking about with news and what... If you if you want us to keep the news segment at the beginning... Yeah, you can play it at home. And it's a board game and everything. And let us sick board game. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's a thing. Okay. It's coming on. Uh, moving on to reviews. Okay, um, so this episode we've got three yeah. reviews. We're going to do The Last Dance, episode one and two, which we're going to review episode one and two, and then we're not going to review The Last Dance. Yeah. Until, until the, the end. end of yeah. episode 10. Absolutely. And if you don't know, The Last Dance is the story of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls over their last year together winning the championship. Yeah. Um, the 97 98 season. What were your initial reactions? <laughs> Look, everyone's blowing up about it. Yeah. But I think it's a bit of a, a hype train because, like, it's good. What they're doing is really great. Like, the, the, the execution of what they want to do is good, but I just don't know if I like what they want to do. Yeah. Like, up. I know the Michael Jordan story. Stop talking about Michael Jordan. I get it. He's the GOAT. He's like the best player on the team. But stop talking about Michael Jordan the whole fucking... But both two episodes were just pretty much predominantly about him. Yeah, but you know, he's the, he's the cash cow. Like yeah, you're, you're watching course. the thing to see Michael Jordan. But yes, you bring him... People are going to be lured in to watch it because of Michael Jordan. But if you can talk about other stuff, people are going to stay interested. Cause like, oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Like in episode two, they did like the first... 17, 18 minutes was about Scottie Pippen mm. and telling a Scottie Pippen story. And I'm a massive basketball fan, basketball junkie, and I barely knew anything about Pippen. His story is so untold. And I was like, fuck, this is awesome. You know what? I, like, I'm not a basketball fan, yeah. as you know. I definitely, I don't watch it. Yeah. I used to play it. That's pretty fucking good. <laughs> that's a, not that's gonna a lie. stretch. No, hey, I was in third basketball. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I, um, yeah, third basketball, guys. But... As a person who's kind of a casual, and I don't really hear you talk about it with our other brother, mm. Dylan. We're both really into Shout out Shout to out Dylan. Shout out Dylan. Um, both basketball that, fans. Yeah. yeah. No auto Dylan. Follow no. it. No auto. <laughs> Follow it. No auto Dylan. His brother's Emmanuel. Get it? Oh, wait, that is him. Oh. 
<laughs> but um, but um, shit oh, joke. So shit is okay. Joke. Um, oh anyways, my god, I'm falling. Starting off with dad jokes. He's leaving. He's leaving the podcast. We're yeah, kicking him out. See you guys. Um, but yeah. So yeah, they were talking about Scotty Pippen the first like 18 minutes. I was like, this is awesome. And then like it's getting really interesting. And then they bring it back to Michael Jordan, like Michael Jordan, Michael Jordan, the greatest player ever. He did this, and this is how it affected Michael Jordan. It's like keep talking about Pippen, and during that time as well, like they were talking about how underappreciated it is how under told yeah, his story it's kind is of they did what he did in his career in the episode yeah. because it's like the first 10 minutes is about scotty piffin mm. and then afterwards you're just like it just cuts away from to michael, michael jordan, jordan about like, his youth which is fine like i i like i like i was going back to like i'm a big fan like i'm not a big fan but i'm a casual fan yeah. of basketball so for me scotty piffin's story when i was watching the second episode I was like, oh my God, this is interesting because it's someone other than Michael Jordan. Because you're only, the two people you hear about in basketball, for me anyway, because I'm casual. Michael Jordan, LeBron. Michael, Michael Jordan, LeBron James. Yeah. Like, and I already, I know Michael Jordan, I don't know him, but I yeah. know of him the story, already. I you don't know need everything. To, yeah. And that's the thing. If you're talking about how underappreciated he is as a player, when he was the, like, without him, they didn't win the championships. Yeah. Everyone knows that. If you're talking about how underappreciated he is, how can you go and underappreciate him in the show? Yeah. You're talking about how but, he doesn't get enough credit. And then after 16, 17 minutes, <laughs> you cut to Michael Jordan for the next 30 and then bring it back. Go, the oh, or maybe we'll give Scotty Pippen the last 90 seconds. And to be honest, these are the, f- okay. These are the first two episodes. Yeah. We're not, this is yeah, what, this, this is our is, initial we're reviewing reaction. The first, we don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Next. So we, we could, it could well it could fact, change. Could not go back to Michael Jordan ever again, yeah. but I highly doubt that. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But just give him an episode. Just give him an episode. And I don't want to just know about Scottie Pippen and Michael as well. Scottie I want to know. He was good. I'll he was a good player. He's I didn't, fucking I didn't even know that. I didn't even know. Yeah. Like, I knew who he was. Like, I'm top 50 of all yeah. time. Any basketball fans list has him in top 50 of all time. Yeah. At the time, he arguably was the second best player in the NBA. Yeah. And it shows in the documentary he was getting paid. He was like the 123rd, 122nd yeah. highest paid player in the NBA. It's name a, name a better up. name a better duo, Jordan Pippen. What about Siegfried and Roy? Shut the fuck up. Siegfried and Roy's pretty good. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> in, actually, in basketball history, that probably isn't a better duo. Uh, Steph Curry, on, Clay Thompson, go maybe. Tangent, go on maybe. A basketball tangent. Steph Curry, Clay Thompson, maybe. I could talk about this all day, but anyways, um, back to the documentary. That's my downfall with it, I guess. Do you want to hear my my yeah. reaction? Okay. So my thought of the documentary is pretty similar to you. I thought, I think it's a really, really good documentary. Like it's really, it's really good. Like I'm not going to say it's shit because I don't, I, I think the, the access to the footage they had and it's amazing. Like they, had, they have 500 hours of yep. footage I was reading. On the footage, um, Spike Lee put out a thing in 2008 and was like, we have, um, all this footage of Michael Jordan and the Bulls over their last year together mm-hmm. winning the championship. We had like camera crews on them the whole year and it's like the footage is sick. We just haven't got the go yeah. to um, make the documentary. And that was like But it's amazing to hold on to that. Amazing to hold yeah. on to that kind of footage. And now it's out, but Spike Lee has nothing to do with amazing it. Amazing to hold on that footage for that long and release it now. You, you were telling me something about yeah, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan giving yeah. the go for it. Um it was after LeBron. This is how crazy of a, of a competitor Michael Jordan is. Like toxic competitiveness. Where that it's like really a, shines through a in downfall in himself. Yes. Toxic competitiveness. He's not a nice bloke. But after... <laughs> Jesse knows him personally. After, <laughs> yeah. um, we're, we're just making so yeah. many friends with this. You know, yeah. Jesse, Blade Runner, 24-9, better movie than Blade Runner. <laughs> Michael Jordan's a dick. <laughs> Just the best. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> this is flyer after flyer. People are going to leave. Maybe Anyways, LeBron, joke. after LeBron did the unthinkable, came back against the gra- arguably the greatest team of all time in the Golden State Warriors. 73. They were no down. Ring? And no ring? They were down 3-1 in the NBA Finals. The Cleveland Cavaliers were down 3-1. LeBron brought them back to win 4-3, right? As soon as they won that championship, that's when Michael Jordan sent the text and was like, get the documentary going because he's like, I need to make sure my name is still in the loop. So, Cause people going LeBron, he's got to be the best. I'm not going to lie to do this. He's the best. And pretty then, sure he's, he's on a fucking shoe. Michael Jordan. I don't think anyone's going to forget Jordan's. Exactly. Like, <laughs> exactly. That's the thing. No one's going to forget Michael Jordan. Like look outside. There's going to be at least one person out yeah. in the city wearing a Jordan shoe. Yeah, it's true. Um, Like 
But that's just how competitive he is. He's like, no, no, get my name out there. Have all this footage of how great I was scoring all this stuff. Like, but to be fair, the documentary also shows him, it shows him being a dick. Like there are bits yeah. in the thing. Well, no, he's not a dick. I don't want to say he's a dick because I think that's an easy label to give Maybe him. he's a nice guy, he's but the competitiveness. He's definitely competitive and it definitely shines through. Because there's a, a scene when they're, when they're training in, I think it's, I think it's episode two and he's yelling at everyone. Mm. And they go on about how he used to uh, bully the general manager, Jeff, yep. Jeff Krause. Is that his name? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and uh, how he used to just go overboard with him. And he, uh, he just wasn't – he seems like – I mean, obviously, you want to play in the team with Jordan. You're going to win six rings. Yeah. Who wouldn't – it'd be great to be like, oh, I played with Michael Jordan. Yeah. But to be in that kind of light, mm-hmm. especially the way the documentary shows mm-hmm. it, is – it's St- crazy. Yeah. Like Steve Kerr has a story. I don't know if it's going to pop up in the documentary. But um, just to highlight how competitive he was, it was like in training and Steve Kerr did something – it was either like a bad play or something, and Jordan yelled at him like really badly. Mm. Um, Steve Kerr was like said something back, and Jordan just socked him right in the face. Oh, that's great. Like that's he's a competitor. That's that's fault. that's the good. I think that's the good thing about the documentary is that you're. I think you just said that Michael Jordan wanted to release it um, mm. when LeBron and then won the. Well, I should say the Cleveland Cavaliers won. Yeah. Uh, the comp, sorry. Oh, sorry, just burped. <laughs> <laughs> My radio sensibilities yeah. are just not on point. Hey, it's our first episode. Exactly. Cut us some slack. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, but what was I saying? Um, g- getting back to the documentary, yeah. I guess, talking about it more. That's the only problem yeah, I have even with though, it. Like, even though he wanted to release, it doesn't shine him in a, in a popular light. You're definitely oh. coming out of this documentary thinking that he is not yeah. the easiest person to work yeah. with. And, and all you, good people are, like, all co- good competitors the are. The only like, thing, but, like, most people know this already about Jordan as well. Like, I just want the documentary because it's called The Last Dance. Yeah, about it's, the Chicago Bulls. The line. Chicago Bulls, Last Dance, their last season. I want to hear about Phil Jackson, the coach. I want to hear about everyone Which and just the are, team. They are They, are they will get into yeah, it. Yeah, yeah but... It's I'm just, keen for that Dennis Rodman episode. It's getting really interesting. Oh, that's going to be sick. I just want to know everything. Yeah. When... It, Okay, the f- one of the first things you see in the in the Randall season Reed. in the series is when he kicks the guy in, in the, the nuts, nuts yeah, the and he just walks off and he's like giving people high five. Yeah, I want to know about that guy. Like and he's he friends so with Kim Jong Un, so yeah, I mean, cool bloke. I mean, I don't think they're going to go into that. Um, shout out him. Shout out shout Kim Jong Un. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, going through some health issues <laughs> right now. Actually, um, he's <laughs> a little burn. rocket man. <laughs> um, well, yeah. So just getting back to the documentary, like it was just annoying that they just didn't talk enough in the first two episodes yeah. mind you that's that's my about right with chicago bulls yeah. like i just want to know about the bulls about them as a whole going through their last year because there is so much that we don't know mm. michael jordan the story's been told a million times it's going to be told a million more times yeah just make this one about the bulls what about um the fact that netflix is now yep. doing a kind of thirty for thirty style mm-hmm. documentary because mm-hmm. they also had the Aaron, Aaron Hernandez, Hernandez, which I, I in didn't January. watch. It was but sick. you watched it. Sick, yeah. really well done, yeah. really well executed. Um, so this is now the second one they're doing of these sport teams and these iconic sports stories. Yeah, and it does seem like they're trying to give ESPN thirty for thirty a run for their money. I mean, thirty for thirty is always going to have their thing because it's so good and yeah. they have so many movies. What's your favorite and, one? There's one about Benji Wilson, this high school basketball player. Uh, who actually, he passed away. He People are saying it's me better than Michael Jordan. Mm. People were saying that. He was having meetings with Nike. Mm. This is in the late 80s. Michael Jordan was rising up. He was having meetings with Nike um, about these hundred, like crazy million dollar deals because he was so good. Yep. And just walking with his girlfriend, um, a gangster just shot him in the head <sighs> in Chicago. Like he had... He was not involved with that stuff. He yeah. just got shot in the head. So that's a really good one. ESPN 30 for 30 always do great movies, but it seems like ES, uh, Netflix, Netflix is yeah. trying to give them a run for their money now. If they, were to do a, if they were to do another story what like, would it be? on Netflix, what do you reckon it would be? No like just after this, like if they're to go after. I, you know, I, I would love to see them do a documentary other than NFL or baseball or NBA, basketball. Yeah. We'll just... Just something different, like and and I, it's gonna come back to um, yeah. extraction, which is the next movie, next thing we'll be doing, mm-hmm. the next review in this episode. But I just love the fact about something. hearing something different because you're always stuck in there. 
And yeah, it's such a global, yeah. I mean, America is such watching, a global empire. Yeah, we're like, especially with sport. Yeah, sport. Like everyone's watching the baseball, not so much baseball internationally, but still. Yeah. I, I would like to hear about Alex Ferguson. Yeah. The, the, the Manchester, the Manchester, coach? yeah, Manchester United. Sir coach. Alex Sir Ferguson. Oh, Sorry, mate. <laughs> Sorry. Forgot that. Fuck. Can't forget. Can't forget the sir. Sir, he was knighted. But apparently he was a he bit. Was he knighted. was. He was like you know not an okay. easy person to to work with. I've heard yeah. a few things, but yeah, it, I would think that would be that cool. great of a coach. Or maybe something nice. something bringing it back home. You know, like about uh, about like Darren Lockyer or like yeah. I don't think um, I don't think Netflix is going to do no, a Darren but, Lockyer. No, but I mean I can dream. Like I can, yeah, of course. That's like my <laughs> if they did an NRL like, all an dream, NRL right? style about like the Last Dance. With them um, all playing, like you know Queensland, you know that Queensland like when they play Origins in a row, twenty sixteen like. when they played twenty sixteen, and um, Thurston came back for game two and he had the busted shoulder. Yeah, and, oh, they, right. and New South Wales were just everyone was like they're gonna win at Jared Hayne and all that and what, and they just couldn't couldn't crack him. And then you know Queensland, Queensland fan, <laughs> not from Queensland, <coughs> <coughs> it doesn't matter. It does. Um, it's called State of Origin. Where are you from? Look, you, I'm going to just not talk about it because we may <laughs> lose fans here. Um, Actually, you know what? That's a good transition to go into our next review. Unless you had something to say about extra. No, um, I think we're done with that. Yeah. I, I guess you get, our, you get our opinion about yeah, The Last Dance. We, like we love it. it. It's great. I think it's really good. I'm giving it like... Yeah, give it something out of 10. 9 out of 10. It's really good. Yeah. If it doesn't go into more about the team it's and the rest of the players, it will be a 7 out of 10 when it's done. But yeah. if they do go into it, it will stay a nine, maybe even a nine. Like, it's really well done. Yeah. But I just want to see more about the other team. Yeah, I think – I don't think I'll give it a nine. The way you talk about it doesn't sound like like a nine out of ten. You, no, you started off just boom. No, because <laughs> I've it. seen so much about how great it is. I'm just trying to give another perspective. Yeah, I love yeah. it. But yeah. I mean, everyone's, everyone, everyone's going yeah. on about it. And but you want to offer something different. Everyone it. says they love it. So yeah. I don't want to come in and be like, it's so great. I love it. Yeah, and that's just a boring. Exactly. Because, you know, we're about giving you guys some content. Yeah, give you some uh, another about, perspective that you about, can think of. Food about for angles. thought. Optimal angles. Uh, optimal angles. Yeah, crazy rich We're going to give you optimal angles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's, what, that, that's our thing. <laughs> that sounds really good <laughs> optimal, optimal angles. angles. Yeah. <laughs> Hong Kong, Vogue, this is a disaster. <laughs> we can quote movies forever. Just yeah. letting you guys know. That's Crazy Rich Asians. <laughs> yeah, love that. That's such a good movie. I love that movie. That's, <laughs> you know what? Sidetrack. That's one of my favorite look, rewatchable movies that's up there. Oh, so Great rewatchable. Movie. But let's let's go back. Yeah, let's go. transition to Extraction now, yeah. which is it's an international uh, movie too. Oh, my God. Okay, so I watched Extraction. Just before, we'll go into a little bit of detail about mm-hmm. it. So Extraction's about a uh, a tortured mercenary, I would say. Yep. I'd definitely say he's tortured. Yes. He's definitely a guy definitely with, a, a, with a, a checkered past. And he is about to... He's saving a, a drug lord's son from being kidnapped. Well, in, in, he's been in kidnapped India. already, yeah. In India. So, yeah. So, he's been uh, yeah, kidnapped by... No, kidnapped in... Bangladesh. Bangladesh. Kidnapped in Bangladesh. Yeah. But he's... he's his dad is the biggest drug lord in like in India, India and or the something. biggest drug lord in Bangladesh has stolen yeah. his son. So that's what's happened. Yeah. And then you've got Chris Hemsworth. He plays the character of Tyler Rake. Mm-hmm. Um, he's in it and he is sent to set, retrieve the son. Yeah. And then obviously he gets this, like he, he's, Nothing goes to play it in the, in the story. That's essentially no. what the movie's about. Well, that's about. every action movie. Nothing can ever go to play. Yeah, I mean, you think it's going one way, but never, yeah. it never really does. And so he's stuck in... In Bangladesh with the sun. I think it's Dakar. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep, yeah, that's his name. Where they, where no, isn't that where, <laughs> that's the name of the city. Isn't that where they Is it I the name of the city or the kid? I'm, you know what? I'm just going to say. Names are really... Go okay. In this movie, names really don't matter yeah, too much. Yeah, you never really hear anyone. Too many name, names, yeah. too much. Um, but you know what? I'm just going to go off and say that when I saw the trailer for this sick. movie, I, I was opposite to you. What? I definitely had the opinion that it was just going to be a standard action film, with your standard mm. one-liners and like, see, you know, just, I watched just, the trailer just like really standard, and I wasn't keen. On, and because you know what, also it's produced by the the Russo brothers who did who directed Avengers Endgame. Yeah, amazing movie, love that movie. And I community they too, they produce also they produce yeah they also produ- yeah. they yeah produced and directed a few episodes of Community as well. That's a great show, one of the best comedies mm-hmm. in the last twenty years. But Good they guy. also they also yeah produced this. And they also produced Twenty One Bridges, which came out last year with I didn't Chad, watch that. Chadwick, Chadwick Boseman, Boseman. Yeah, which from you know, Isn't I don't think good? it's not. A, uh, I saw a little bit of it. I, I saw the trailer. I wasn't it was a bit pleased. standard, so that's what led me to believe this was going to be standard. Yeah, but I was, I was, 
I actually, because my expectations are so mm. low, I think, you that when I watched away? this, I was actually blown away. I thought Me? it was really good. I was, I guess my expectations of the trailer and the movie were kind of equal. Like, I watched the trailer, I was like, this looks awesome. Yep. This is sick. But the trailer was so much action that it made me know the action was the best part yeah, of the it's movie. It's definitely a character in the yeah. film. It so is. watching the movie, I just watched it this morning and like the action is 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10. Whoever was the choreographer for that well, deserves a fucking massive round of you applause. You bring that up with the director of the movie, this guy called yeah. Sam Hargrove. It's his first movie. Mm-hmm. He's actually a stunt. Stunt right, and, he, right. and he's done a few stunts for. That um, makes sense. Yeah, he's done a few stunts for the Russo brothers. I think he did Captain America: Civil War, Stop and he might have done Endgame. Actually, I'm not going to go out and say that, but he yeah. definitely has worked. He's worked in the Marvel universe, yeah. and he's oh, he was a stunt man in Atomic Blonde, which is okay. a movie that came out with yeah. James McAvoy, mm-hmm. and that's also an action movie. And anyway, you can definitely tell that action in this movie is insane because he's a stunt man, and he he know it's beautifully done, like. The action so is crazy. Good. So good. And it, at times it can be a bit senseless. Like this, like It can just go like on and on and on and on. There's some ridiculous deaths in it. He, he like swings. It's, he it's has so a, he has, cool. okay. He gets a guy, swings the human body and whacks off like another guy's head. With yeah, it. yeah. Like something crazy. It's awesome though. The action was 11 out of 10. So the, whoever, like the choreographer for that is fucking yeah, amazing. And they shot the it film so crew, well too. 10 out of 10 yeah. as well. 11 out of 10 for both of them. Yeah. So the, the but. The, yeah. Okay. But. The story for me, like, yeah, just, well, the, 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 I guess when the action calmed down and I was watching it, yeah, it made me kind of like, okay, enough of that. Yeah. Um, what's the time? Bring back the action, yeah, you know what I mean? I was like, oh, come on, bring back some action, but then if it was all action, I'd still say that's too much action, but you know what? For me, the story wasn't the problem because I mean. I didn't expect to go in there and see the greatest story known to man. As I told you in the trailer, I wasn't I wasn't expecting much. Yeah. Even in terms of story. Like the action looked good in the trailer, but the story for me wasn't mm-hmm. going to be anything too crazy. Yeah. But the action makes up for that. I guess it's like the action literally is like John Wick level action. Yeah. It is so good. But <clears throat> I don't know, just... It serves its purpose, I guess. If you want to watch Chris Hemsworth go in there like Keanu Reeves and just kick some ass. He's really good in it, I will say. He is actually amazing. And he gets to keep his Australian accent. Mm. Thank fucking God. Because I'm so sick. Of people putting on accents. Well, I'm just sick of an American going into a country and just... Oh, we're gonna take over. Patriot. America. Like, I just don't care anymore. Like We love America. A thousand times. (laughs) Let (laughs) us in, please. We love America. We love America. But just... Enough's enough. I'm so sick of it. Like, I'm just sick. I just want to see fresh take. Mm. That's why, you know. And I'm sure I Americans are interested Crazy Rich in Asians that before. I brought up Crazy Rich Asians before, and I definitely think that's a movie that's a different take of a rom-com because it's just straight off. It's just Asian characters, mm. and I, I, that's what I want to see. I want to see more. And the fact that you get to see his Australian accent, you get to see, like, just being Australian is just good enough for me because you never get to see those he's kind of people. Kimberley's. Yeah, and he doesn't overdo the Australian accent. He's like, like, fair dinkum, mate. No, like, like he's just speaking oh, how he speaks. Can't, no. Yeah, like, <laughs> you talk about mate. Yeah, he just said, like, the only thing he says Australian is mate. Mate, like, but like everyone says He's that, just right? a man. And he's, and I think he does that, it's kind of different from, I don't want to say it's different because he does, he's done action before, but lately you see him in a lot of comedies and like Men in Black, International. Yeah. Yeah. Woo wee. That mm. stunk. <laughs> well, I think I think from But he's it's just good to see yeah. him in an action movie and actually get to act with some depth in an action movie. Coming and from an actor's point where I'm always looking at actors and their choices and stuff. Mm. I think he's making good choices. Got play Daniel Day Lewis and Daniel Yeah. <laughs> well, no, like I think it's a I, true. Well, I want to be an actor, so I'm always <laughs> looking at actors and what they're doing and, and like I guess what they do, I guess, and their choices. And yeah. he, he's trying to have a, trying to build up a catalog of unique movies. Yeah. Have like a good action film. He's playing an Australian, you know, like, and, and he's done Rush. Like mm. he, he's trying to do other stuff too. Um, I, I mean, mean, Rush is pretty old. I will say, yeah. I think a big criticism of the movie is definitely the story. Even though I wasn't expecting it to be a good story, you can definitely predict where the story yeah. goes at certain of points. Course. But yeah, the action is insane. Mm. There is one bit in the movie. I kid you not, people. There is one bit in this movie where it's a one shot and it goes it's for. Fucking I sick. think it goes for nearly 10 minutes. It's and it sick. is one of the best action set mm. pieces you will ever see. 
and it and it definitely you were saying you brought up John Wick. Yeah, yeah John Wick That's is that definitely level yeah, shit. it's definitely that kind of movie. Yeah, um, especially there's a movie called The Raid. I think it's a, I, don't I don't think wanna, I've seen it. It's an Indo- Indonesian movie. Mm-hmm. It's an action movie, and it's just like this guy just taking yeah. just fucking taking names, just killing people. It's crazy. It's intense. I haven't seen the whole thing. I've only seen bits of it, but the action in that is yeah. is insane. And this movie. Whether it's really yeah, you're not here for the story. You're here yeah. for the action. The, the film action crew, the yeah, it serves its purpose for what I wanted to do. The film crew was fucking amazing. Yeah. The cinematographer, yeah, Newton so Thomas good. Siegel yeah. is his name. He shot Drive. Mm. The only That's problem, I, uh, another problem movie, actually, yeah. CGI. Um, oh yeah, it was really good, but then maybe budget or something. There was just some points I was like, okay, they spent all the budget on the fucking ammunition and the bombs. Oh they fucking my, had. they fucked up. Bangladesh. They like I never knew Bangladesh had so many guns just laying around. What do you place. think about what do you think about the bad guy? He's a good bad guy, I guess. I think the bad guy was quite good in it. I think yeah. he was quite fearful. I think you definitely got a sense and that the they fact were that feared. he didn't have to do much himself yeah. to be feared. Yeah. We're talking about the That's drug what lord, I like. Yes. Lord, yeah. He didn't have to do much himself to be feared. He had his assistant, the Indian Biggie Smalls Peter Pettigrew looking motherfucker. Who yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, he looked like him, eh? <laughs> Looks like Peter Pettigrew right. helping out Voldemort. He had the craziest hair. Um, he was like this long ass <laughs> mullet. And the, you know, the first introduction you get to him is that he he he, he chucks a chucks a person off the off the off the yeah, off the top of the building. That's another thing. This movie is not afraid to do anything. Yeah, it, ta- it this guy grabs hold, a kid, yeah. throws him off the building. Like we don't want to give too much away. Yeah. Like I don't want to. I don't want to go into too many spoilers yeah. and ruin the movie for people. But yeah, I think. He was a he was a good bad guy, even though he doesn't have much in terms of action. Yeah, I think but he's, pre- he's still feared. Yeah. His presence yeah, is his presence so is well because of everyone he's got under his belt. He's got the police. Yeah. He's he got barely everyone. spoke in the movie. Yeah, he barely had any scenes. Yeah, and he was just so well. I don't know, just I really think, well. Done. I I think another thing for me, I would have loved to have seen another five minutes of Chris Hemsworth and the kid Ovi. <laughs> Spending time together, just a bonding. little bit more time. Just like the connection wasn't. I think the connection wasn't. It was there. They went for it, but, but it, they didn't. They quite. didn't mm. get it fully because I think you needed. I would have been more another, sad. You in needed that. another scene just for the emotional impact yeah. that they yeah. like. Their relationship is so important, yeah. you know, like especially in the movie because that's like the the characters are the are the story in a sense that like they're they're providing the. You need mm. a bit of an emotion in the movie. Is what I'm trying to say, and they're providing it. It's, um, and I think you just need another scene with them and you would have had a really emotional connection with both of them. Mm-hmm. But for me, it wasn't just there. But I thought the kid was really good. His name is... Oh, I'm going to I'm gonna butcher this, but I'm going for Give it. Give it a go. No holds barred. Rudhashki... Rudhashki Jaiswala? I want to say that. Jai... Yeah. That sounds... Jaiswala. Uh, yeah. Jaiswala. That's what I'm going to say. He was really good. And you know who's in it too? Shout out Rahashki. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's a he's a he's a big listener. He loves this podcast. <laughs> loves it. Kills it. Um, loves the slab. Eats the slab. <laughs> Seinfeld reference. His mother was a mother. His <laughs> <laughs> mother was a mother. Um, um, but yeah, it, but also oh, wait, wait, wait. Just before you go yeah. forward, another person in the movie, David Harbour from Stranger Things yes. is in it. Yes. And he is pretty good. I thought he was good. I th- He's I, a good. I thought co- anyone could have played that role, and I think he did the he did best with what he did. Yeah. He had a, like a smaller role, but he's good in it, and I think um, he gets to flex a few muscles. He holds a bit of weight, and he's going to be yeah. in the new Black Widow movie. I think you're getting a little. There's a there's a little, little bit of Marvel on the about rise it. as well. You get a bit of Marvel about this movie because you got the Russos. Mm-hmm. You got the Russos producing mm-hmm. it. They also Joe Russo, one of the directors mm-hmm. um, of the of Endgame. He wrote it. He wrote the movie, and you you got Chris Hemsworth, you got David Harbour is going to be in the upcoming yeah. Black Widow movie, and so you get a sense of their yeah their you get a sense of his action and what he could bring to the Black Widow movie, which I'm excited for him because I think he's such a good actor, and I think really in Stranger Things he he was so good. Do you watch Stranger Things? I love Stranger Things. Really? It's so. Do you not watch it? I didn't even know that. What do you How mean? How did I not know that? That I love Stranger yeah. Things. What, the fuck? what do you mean? <laughs> I've never like I I, I tried well, watching like the first other. episode. And I didn't quite get into it, but um, I hear that Aussie actor is pretty good in it. Season two, Dacre Montgomery. Yeah, well, he's in. Yeah, he he's plays a good character. Three. Season three, apparently, his character develops a little more. Yeah, he's, he's quite good. Yeah, in that. he's like one of those. <laughs> it's a character. It's a very um. It's a film thing to do. Very typical film thing to do to have a bad guy 
redeem himself in a movie, which yeah. is you know, it's okay. like every movie. Thanks but for the like, spoiler, mate. <laughs> but, um, but you know, but you know, like he, he's got redeemable qualities. Yeah. You know, I he's, hear not, he's, good he's a dick, but he's not. You don't, they don't push him too far. Yeah. What's his character name? Billy. Billy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Billy. I think his name is. He's also got a sister in the in the show, right. and right. she plays one of the main characters in right. Stranger Things. But yeah, he. Um, yeah, David Harbour is really good, and yeah. he's a good actor, and I'm really keen to see him in Black Widow, especially yeah, especially after this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a good movie. I but really I, well, did you also. I was gonna say, I was surprised. There was like a couple lines in there that were funny. Did you laugh at some bits? I did. When I he was like, he was a like, piss off or something like when yeah. he slaps him. Like that was there so is, funny. I'm, you know, what? I'm just gonna un- there's like a little bit of a not a spoiler, yeah. but there's a children of the corn moment. <laughs> and I'm yeah. gonna these, so- yeah, these children <laughs> like come at him <clears throat> and like attack him yeah, with spoiler, gun- spoiler, alert. spoiler alert, whatever. These yeah. children come at him with like these guns and knives, and this guy is like. He's just a badass. Like, you're not going to stop him, let alone a, a three 11 year old yeah. kids. And he just bitch slaps. He, he is, um, pissed yeah, off. He's, yeah, he's quite funny. But you know, also, there wasn't, there wasn't this du- like a re- really dumb one liners. Like, after no, he kills someone, and it, it says, like, yeah. <laughs> what's that thing in Russia? That all you got? Oh, oh, in uh, uh, Aquaman. Wipe yourself off, you bleeding. Uh, like, <laughs> in Aquaman, like, permission to come aboard. Yeah. Like, no, none of these stupid it. lines. Dumb. Like, yeah, it was. It was a movie that tried really hard, and it, you can really appreciate the yeah. effort made in yeah. this movie because it doesn't it doesn't want to be taken mm. dumb. It doesn't want to be taken. It serves yeah, its silly. purpose for what it was meant to be. Yeah. I guess the movie. And like, I think it's really good. They didn't overreach. They didn't go under anything. It was just really just executed. What they wanted was executed very well. You're really gonna want. I think if you you're gonna have a good time watching this. Yeah, watch it. You'll you'll enjoy it. Yeah, you'll you're laugh. not gonna have a bad time. You'll get really into it. The action's fucking sick. So if you really don't like gory things, I mean, it's not gory, but if you don't like violence, mm. then maybe you're going to have yeah. an issue. But like violence, then why are you watching the movie in the yeah. first place? You know, it's an action film. No, uh, moving on from this, that. No, what would you give it out of 10? You give the people the rating. You okay. can't just jump forth. Radio sensibilities, Jesse. Well, yeah, so 10 out of 10 for the film, 10 out of 10 for 10 the- 10 out of 10? No, 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 for the, for the film crew. Oh. 10 out of 10 for the <laughs> choreography of the, act, of the action stuff. But- uh, for the actual story, six. So I'd probably give it like seven. I'm not going to be too confusing and give you numbers. No, I'm just letting them know how I figure it out. Seven. I'm giving it a seven. I give it a seven too. Okay. I really, really enjoyed it. I loved it more than I thought. That's because I had low expectations. What are you talking about? It's like you want to give it a fucking nine. I really enjoyed it. This was amazing. Everything was so <laughs> well you, done. What about you with the last dance? Oh, I hated how they do this, but I'll give it a nine. Yeah. <laughs> That was you. <laughs> Literally, that was you. Like, you can't even like. I can fucking rewind the table. Like, yeah, it. okay. Don't make um, me. Uh, yeah, so we're both going to give it a seven. Okay, so let's move on to our third and final review. Before we get into this, we actually have a thing called Classic Movie Fridays, where we Three. watch not old, old, sometimes old, but just classic <laughs> movies that are really good and underappreciated. It's in a classic cinema. movie Friday with also a pizza. Yeah, with a pizza. pizza. So we get a pizza bread. and we watch a classic movie. And two weeks ago, we watched The Prestige. And oh my god, it is just so like we'd seen. I mean, we've like, seen it so many times. Some contact. I've seen this movie. I reckon about a hundred times, and it's always good. It is. If any of you guys out there the best. haven't watched it, watch it. It's so rewatchable as well. So the movie's about. It's. It was made in two thousand six, and it's a thriller about these two magicians that rival each other. One is. The Prestige is what yeah. it's called. I don't think we said its name. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> the Prestige. Yeah, radio Sensibilities. Yes. Oh my God. That's going to be a very big thing for me. Radio yeah. Sensibilities. Hashtag. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get but, there. Um, yeah, so it's about these two magicians set in the 1890s, I believe. And it's directed by Christopher Nolan and stars Hugh Jackman, who I think is perfectly cast in this role of Robert this, Angier. If any of you guys like Hugh Jackman, and of course there'll be a lot of Australians watching um, and listening... <laughs> If you guys like you, Jackman, this might be his best film. Oh, Jesse, you're so contentious. From an mate. acting... You're controversial. No. Who from, do I wrap myself in? I should have got Dylan, the other brother. No, legit, it could be. You reckon? It, name another... Like, of course, he's got some good movies, but think about it. This could be his best acting... What about Logan? Performance. Yeah, Wolverine. that was good too. That was good too. I'm not saying... What about the I'm not saying it prisoners? definitely is. I'm saying it could be. Yeah, it's good. Don't Don't... Manipulate my words here. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's also got Christian Bale in it, who plays Alfred Borden. Mm-hmm. 
Borden. Borden? Mm-hmm. Borden. Yeah, and he, he's really good in it too. Yeah. And yeah, so the movie's just about these this two rivalry. rivalry that and it really off. captures the rivalry oh so well. The movie is insane. It's so crazy. many cool scenes. It's um such a good story. The main theme is like obsession. You they're obsessed mm-hmm. over magic. In, over ma- but it's it's not even about magic. It's just about one upping each other because mm-hmm. yep. early on in the movie, and we'll go. We'll actually, mm. you know, let's go into spoilers. About actually, this movie, also, the movie did come out ten years. Yeah. Uh, well, we'll go into like a light spoiler. We won't give let's give him a little bit away, of a thing as well. Christian Bale's character is probably the better magician. Yeah, where well, you got. Hugh Jackman, who's the Hugh better Jackman, stage who's man. the better showman. Yeah, so Hugh showman, Jackman sorry. pretty yeah. much just steals Christian Bale's tricks and can do them way better. We said light spoilers. That's, yeah. I mean, nah, that's, that's not, not much of a nah, spoiler at all. Not really. And just can do it. He's the better showman. He can just put on a way better show for the crowd, whereas Christian Bale doesn't really know how to do it, mm. how to perform as well, but he knows the magic. Like, that is his life. Yeah. He's, he's Hugh Jackman in it. Um, yeah, he's just, he's just he's just a bit more showy, and like he works with Michael Caine, who's really yeah. who's really good. <laughs> Give me a Michael Caine, go. You have to. I already buried one Batman. That I will not bury another. Some people wah, just want to watch wah, the world wah. burn. <laughs> That's a good Michael Caine <laughs> voice. Shit. Some people you know just want to watch the, the, the world to, burn. The way to do his voice is if you say Michael Caine. Michael Caine. And then, yeah. See so that Michael sound? Caine. Like, yeah. Michael Caine. Michael Caine. Exactly, but he's he's good in it too. And he's a he's a Christopher Nolan regular. Like he's in he's in the Batman yeah. movies. He's in Inception. And he Who, never he, does Christopher an Nolan, I don't know if we brought this up, but Christopher Nolan directed Prestige. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was coming off. The, I think he came off the back of the Batman Begins. Begins. After this, uh, this was Batman Begins was before the Prestige. Was it? I'm okay. pretty sure. But yeah, anyways, um, and and Memento too. Yeah. Memento. That's I don't know if you've seen that. Mm. But Memento is that is that's one that was it's like his first big yeah. film he, with Guy Pearce. I think he had one called The Following, which was before that. But Memento is um really good movie. That's that's intense too. He's he's a great director. You know that that doesn't need to be said. He's an amazing director. Yeah. But Prestige, I think, in my opinion, is he one of his is his most underrated film. Yeah, it's so because underrated. This I don't the hear story, about it enough. And it's so layered because I think if you like Memento, you can definitely see in the Prestige. It, ta- it takes from Memento. Like, the story is told from different angles and different mm-hmm. perspectives. Yeah. Like, you've got... You, you start off one bit and then it goes to the next bit. And yeah. it, it's definitely taking the Memento approach where starting kind of at the end back and you're working, you're working, you're working your way back to parts, the beginning. Yeah. But, yeah. But not it's, even that. It just takes different yeah. parts of... Yeah. It's su- yeah. It's just such an underrated film. And the casting was just done amazingly. Hugh Jackman. Like, is, casting Hugh Jackman in that, who stress. is a great showman naturally. Yeah. That's what he and does. And Scarlett Johansson's in it. And she's Might really be, good. Is it one of her early films? Would you say? No, she, like, no, 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 no. No, I'm saying, like, with her, like... Was she in anything great before this? Yeah, she was in Lost in Translation. Are you serious? Fuck. Lost in Translation, that is a great it movie. Was. She's in a few other things, but yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't a big time... You know... The prestige. She was young in this. It's one, funny because like we're, we're gonna have a topic. No, she, she would. Yeah, she probably. Yeah, like she was like 20, 20, we 19 that, yeah. or twenty. She's like. only thirty five now. She's exactly. She's, she's done. She's got such a great filmography. But we were talking about this as being like a later topic to talk about in movies where we've got movies, sort of the similar plot, similar similar plotted movies coming out the same year. Because this is one of three movies that came out in two thousand six. That's about magic. You got right, the yeah, Illusionist, yeah, yeah. which is with um, Edward yeah. Norton. And you've also got Scoop, which is also with Scarlett Johansson. I haven't Jansen. seen Scoop. Sco- Scoop's good one. It's a Woody mm-hmm. Allen movie. I think it's it's pretty good. I I, I enjoy it a lot. But Prestige is sorry is one <laughs> Radio Sensibilities. Um, it's it's definitely one of his best. It's 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 a period piece, and it's such a lo- it's just lovely lovely to look at. Movie is so great to look at. Like you, the costume design, the production design. You're definitely getting a feel of mm. London at the time. Yeah. Um, you definitely get growth in these characters. Mm. And you also see what I find interesting is like, because it's at like the turn of the century kind yeah. of, right? And um, you see like back then people didn't have uh, like all this science and stuff, knowledge that we know now. Mm. So when these magicians would go to scientists like Thomas Edison and uh, David Bowie in this movie plays yeah, um, Tesla. Tesla. And like they would go to them who were like real life magicians back then because they were doing stuff that people didn't understand and they would get tricks like stuff from them for using science that yeah. people couldn't understand and thought like, oh, like this is like real sorcery. Like, it's funny that you bring up Tesla and Edison because in that in this movie, you've also got their it, it hints, the movie's their a lot rivalry. about rivalries. Yeah, so yes. it hints at their rivalry and also and 
yeah, mm. kind of backdrops to yeah. Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale's rivalry as musicians. Um, what's another bit that's good about it? The th- there's a good sacrifice. That's another thing yes. I think. Sacrifice to your craft and yeah. what you want to living, achieve living in life. Your craft. Like it would, if you really want to do this and be like the best at this, you yeah, have to you just have to just go for it. You have to live it. Like sacrifice everything. Yeah. Like I won't give anything away, but there is huge sacrifice to what they want to achieve. In Very this early on in the movie, the um, Michael Caine gives them a task because he he they, originally they're working the for a magician, yeah. and Michael Caine is the Engineer, but as he says in the movie, ingenieur. <laughs> yes. He definitely, he calls himself, a, I'm an ingenieur, mate. It's like, if I sell my tricks to these people, people have all the tricks or something like that. Anyway, that was my Michael. That was pretty That's dreadful. a Michael Caine voice. But he gives I thought you were doing Christian Bale. <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> oh my God. I'm so bad. But um, in the be- at near the beginning of the movie, he gives Hugh Jackman and Christian Bale a task to go watch this um, Chinese magician. Mm. And the, and it's that from that scene, you're definitely getting a sense of... Because they're tasked with finding out how the Chinese magician does his tricks. And you're definitely getting a sense of the movie from that point. Like that movie, from yes. then you're like... Okay, this is... Yeah, you're, yeah. you, you kind of... Kind of like a foreshadowing. Yeah, exactly. You, you got to... They live their art. And it's the, the extent of which they're willing to live it. To go. Like, and they were probably like the two greatest magicians at that time, right? In Maybe just in England. Mm. Maybe just Europe. I don't know. But like... It's just, it's a real testament to anything as well, yeah. in a way. Like, if you want to be the best, the best, you, the, the things you're going to have to give up and the things you're going to have to do. Like, there's Speak, a th- going back to The Last Dance, Michael Jordan. Yeah. Exactly. It's a perfect movie to go back exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. Like, he just. The things you have to if do. If you want to be the best, you have to just. Some stuff people aren't willing to do. You have to be psychotic. Yeah. In a way. You can't be normal. Yeah. You just have to go all in and just live it. Like, yeah. It's intense. Like, just. They're. Their rivalry between each other is so intense that they're willing to yeah willing to give up whatever it is in order to achieve what they need to do yeah because they're magicians and what, what, there's a there's a quote in the movie <coughs> that Michael Caine says and it says he has you have to be, he has to know that you're willing Michael to get Caine. your your hand yeah Michael Caine <coughs> <coughs> love him he's a great ne- actor never does an accent yeah I, if there's a movie out there he does an accent we want to know you know I'm, why you know why he doesn't do an accent why doesn't do an accent because he's Michael Caine. Well, okay, you're distracting me from he my story, but to. he's got a great. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah. One and done. I think that's what we should call the podcast. One, one and done. done. That's it. <laughs> We're out. But People um, this. the one, the quote he says in it, he's you've got to be willing to. He's got to be willing to know to get your hands dirty or something. Yeah. You've got to get your, like that's a big thing. Mm. Getting your hands dirty, and it's amazing the back and forth. Hey, what's that the they line? Have to. He says. Uh, what if I don't want to get my hands dirty? Like, then get off the, the yeah, stage. Yeah, then get off the stage because that's completely what they yeah. have to do. They they have they they have to be willing to to do whatever the, what the other man can't do. Mm-hmm. It's intense. It's such a good movie. And then you think, is it all worth it what to achieve reckon? like their massive goal and their passion to be the best? Right? They can achieve it. Just because you achieve your goal doesn't mean you achieve happiness because you can lose, and they lose a lot. You sacrifice a lot for your goal. Yeah, there's a lot. So it depends. It's so hard to not talk about spoilers, even though this movie did come out more than 10 years ago. Don't worry about spoilers. (laughs) I don't want to give it away because I'm reviewing it, but I don't want to, I want people to have the same enjoyment that I've, when I first watched it, I was like, oh my God. And there's a great line that that Christian Bale has that's just like a big hint in the movie. He's like, are you watching closely? Yes. And you're just like, you, that's how this movie starts and he says are oh, you watching close? and you're just the whole time you're just gonna watch the movie because they what have a, a fucking movie because yeah it's got one of the best endings in a movie so good I, I absolutely adore it I it's I'm definitely recommend it to anyone who's really who don't even have to love magic because magic is just the backdrop it's just it's, magic is not the point of the movie what did you think about the trick because there's one trick in the movie that they're, they obsess about what do you think about it well it's I don't think the trick's ever been done in real life. I've never I don't think it can be like that. The trick is fucking amazing. I, it definitely can be done. Obviously, they do it in the movie. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, they do it in the movie. It's a movie. They can do whatever the fuck they want. But on stage in front of a live audience, that you could trick definitely do this trick. Fucking, you could definitely do well, it. Well, the trick has got to be the greatest magic trick of all time. The scene when they reveal the trick and it's just got this loud. The score in the movie. It's probably not the best score to listen to. Outside of the movie, because no, it's but, just like yeah. it's just like this sound, and Christi- movie, Christopher Nolan has fucking... amazing, amazing scores. Like Inception, mm-hmm. they're amazing. The Dark Knight trilogy, that's their amazing scores. But in this one, 
the bit where they reveal the magic trick. Well, Hugh Jackman goes to see Christian Bale because Christian Bale has this one magic trick. And the way he acts it out, he's just sitting there and he's sitting in his chair and Scarlett Johansson just says, so what did you see? How did you go to the show? And he's like, yeah, I went to his show. And he's like, what did you, what did you that think? That line. And he's like, it was the greatest magic trick I've ever seen. And yeah. it, it is the crazy The score to go trick. along with it, like that line. It just, just builds. It's just like a slow sound and builds. Kind of similar like to the you dark You have to take like, like a deep, left. after he says he's like, that Fuck. gives me chills every time he says it because it's it's just his, he acts it perfectly. It's just he doesn't overact. Doesn't overdo it. Doesn't undo he it. Just, it. He just he delivers like, it so well. He is the greatest magic I've ever seen, and you so you believe it. And the trick good. is so amazing. I really want to say what the trick is, but I don't want to give it away because <laughs> it's like killing me. Because I just want to like dive into it. Just like <laughs> we might have to make that a thing. Just further episodes where you just have to talk about yeah. movies because it's so. It is. I mean, when I've watched uh, other podcasters. And YouTubers, and they don't talk film, about and something, and you know it. what it is, and yeah. you're yelling it at the <laughs> fucking thing. It's this, it's this. We were talking about this earlier. It's like fucking Dora the Explorer yeah. when, like, she's like, "Where's the apple?" Yeah, and you're like, it's, there. "It's to the left of you, yeah, Dora. You just, <laughs> it's to the left." <laughs> you're just yelling at people, and it's so. I'm now I'm realizing how hard it is to talk about spoilers and not yeah. to not talk and about not do them. it because yeah, because it's such a big part of the movie, especially mm. with the Prestige. It's it's an amazing movie. And yeah, that's pretty. What would you give out of ten? Just end it. Oh fuck, nine, nine, nine. I definitely nine. If you're giving Extraction a seven, Prestige is a nine. Come on, come on. I think we need to really rework this. this come on, because uh, ten is that's a big one. That's like a perfect film. Ten, yeah. Well, you we'll know, know what? what ten it. is. I'm gonna no. Nah, you know, I'm Don't not, I'm not gonna give. Anything. I'm not giving. I'm not giving out tens. I'm not giving out tens till I see a ten. And I think this movie is a nine. Yeah, I'm well, going to agree think, with think you. About, to me, to me, like the Godfather Part Two is a ten. Yeah, but the difference between the Godfather. Okay, I'm not putting down the Prestige and the, God, but the Godfather saying. Part yes. Two is ten. That's what I'm saying. But the jump nine between, needs to be yeah. like there. But no, the jump between sorry, was, eight and nine. The, the jump between eight and nine is point zero one of the jump between nine and ten. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. But anyway, Prestige for me is in my top twenty films of all time. And you know what? I'm going to give out a little shout out here. I think you might know who it's going to. We'll shout out to Mr. Jacob Healy, listening all the way in Tasmania, because we know he we, wants we, to be on this got, podcast. He, as well. he he definitely he tried to audition. He's sending in some auditions. He tried to audition. I think a little subtle audition, <laughs> but um, yeah, he's a, he's a mate of mine. He's my best friend. Um, he loves this movie too. Best and, he, and only friend. <laughs> okay, don't have to get personal. No cheap shots here. I thought this was supposed to be a fun podcast, yeah. and you're just I love you. Me to, shreds. to be fair, my dad joked earlier on. Was about the Emmanuel one with the no auto about Dylan. Yeah. Oh my god, <laughs> Dylan's our brother, by the way. That I was terrible. I've, uh, I think for the second episode, second run, I'll be better. No, no, no. <laughs> but no this is good. Yeah, anyway, Jake. Um, what's going on about him? He he loves this movie too, and we definitely talk. We this is a movie that we talk about and recommend to everyone because he's a he's a film nerd as mm-hmm. well, a bit of a cinephile. But he loves a he loves a movie, and I, so do I. I recommend this movie to anyone. Just anyone. Ever, if even if you're not like. Into movies, like obviously we are. You're gonna get something. You're, out you'll of it. watch the Prestige and be blown away. Yeah, it, it's it's insane. And if yeah. you're not blown away, you can get fucked. That's all I can say. <laughs> <laughs> Got trip over a knife. <laughs> we're, we're just gonna lose. We're losing followers as soon as we, if we have any. If anyone's listening out there, <laughs> yeah. we're losing them just as quickly as we begin them. Jesse's, but you know, Jesse's firing off. You, you're definitely like you what said the I most done? contentious things. You're definitely saying co- like really controversial topics. What you got to do? Yeah, you got to you got to really hit in. the ground running. You just come in with a bang. Yeah, exactly. You know? We're offering different point of views. Exactly. Optimal angles. Otherwise, what's, what's what the, optimal angles? <laughs> this is a disaster. I told you, if we used the optimal angles, it would have been in the US folk. Should maybe watch that for classic movie Friday. This it's one. not really a classic movie, but it's it's definitely a good one. But anyway, back to That's the prestige classic. and my rating. I I give it a nine out of ten. Definitely my top 20. Yeah, well. Come on. You just said nine. Okay, don't worry. What? We just had that. We just had that. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. All right. Can I speak? No. Fucking hell. Like, <laughs> a, like a single mother, like my opinions don't matter or something. They don't. No. They don't. <laughs> okay, that was a joke. Uh, single mothers. That's That was a joke. I'm we not we love your shit. single mothers. Yeah. Yeah, all the single ladies. Put your hands up. Okay. This, we're getting out of we're going out of we're in a tangent here. <laughs> yeah. Um and yeah, yeah, nine out of ten. It's it's top twenty movies for me of all time. I love it. First time so I watched good. it, loved it. I've watched it ever since. I still love it. I love it even more. I love David Bowie in it. 
I love Hugh Jackman really in it. Christian Bale. Do David Bowie, no wrong. modern actor. Yeah. Quickly on that, best singer turned actor. Well, not singer turned actor, but singer who's also an actor. Mark Wahlberg? Who's the best. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, that's a rapper. I'm talking singer. What do you mean? Like Lady Frank, Gaga's all right. Frank Sinatra, Lady Gaga. Sinatra. David Bowie. Oh, you're putting me on the spot because I could usually think. Ron Gosling. He was a singer in the Mickey Mouse Club. He's a great actor. <laughs> Have you heard him sing? Is he good? For anyone out there, anyone out there <laughs> listening, dead set, type into YouTube. Brian Gosling, um, Mickey Mouse Club, and he sings this R and B song with Justin Timberlake. Don't put it on now because no, I'm like not putting it on. I'm like, just going to search it up. Um, Dead Set. If you hear it, when he was younger, he's an amazing singer. When he he could like R and B feels and so that. For anyone who doesn't know, well, everyone doesn't know, but I, I'm a bit of a singer myself. I like to sing a few tunes. Yeah, like <laughs> I, 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 I do a few John gigs. Do a few gigs there, Jesse. Gigs in Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool. I went to the Liverpool school <laughs> for Liverpool. I went to the that pool in Liverpool. Went to the pool Liverpool. That's and where I met the Paul. Pool, I went to the school and yeah. I met Paul at the school. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I do. do <laughs> I do a bit of music on the side, and he. I, I'm, I'm up. Anyone who's known me for a long time will know that I'm the biggest Ryan Gosling nut. Like, I love him. He's a great actor. I've loved him in everything. He's amazing. And he's just an amazing singer. So, uh, anyone, anyone. He needs to YouTube, do more, too. Ryan Gosling, please do more movies. No way. Yes. Actually, no. What do you mean to talk about? Yeah, he needs to do more. Yes. I heard a room actually. Um, Retiring. Heard it's the grapevine. No way. Oh. But he was going to be in Thor. Well, he had a meeting with Taika Waititi, and Ooh. people, I thought it was about Thor. Uh, Love and Love and Thunder, which is the yeah. new Thor movie, going to come but it out. Wasn't. Well, you know, has all the cast been released for that? We know Christian Bale. Who's Christian Bale is a great actor. He's going to be in. He's uh, Thor. Yeah, he's going to be in Thor. He's the villain, mm-hmm. and they don't know who's playing yet. But yeah, he's going to he's going to be in it. But yeah, Ryan Gosling singing YouTube Mickey Mouse Club. <laughs> he nice pipes to Mika because he's <laughs> School of Rock reference. Nice pipes to Mika. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to be a singer. That. We're just riffing right now. This is what you do. You riff. It's like jazz. Yeah. You never know which you way some, it's going to I throw go. some, you accept. And you exactly. Or maybe I won't accept. Maybe I won't. <laughs> Who knows? Shall we wrap it up, Jesse? Yeah, I think that was... That's a good episode. So that was the first episode <laughs> of... Just um, to give himself a pat in the back. Yeah. That was a good episode. That was a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you got to have ticket on yourself. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, that was... Um, so that wraps it up, I guess, for episode one of the Flickers podcast. Be sure to subscribe. Actually, wait. Add, yeah. us, add us on Instagram at uh, Flickers Pod. Yeah. Um, DM us any movies you think we should uh, review. DM us any questions you have. Yeah. Anything any you have. Any movies too that yeah. we want to watch for Classic yeah. Movie Friday. Yeah. We'll put that up. DM us open. and ask questions and we'll answer the questions on here. So be sure to subscribe, uh, follow us, Flickers Pod, um, and you can email us at meettheflickers at gmail.com. Yeah.